Hey, welcome back. It's a special Christmas time episode of the Garage Orloff Show. It's September 3rd, I believe, or the 4th, 2022. It's about to be Labor Day. We're uh, waiting for the big Donald Trump rally to start at 7. And uh, we've got the tree all decked out. The Christmas gifts already waiting down below the tree. Um, we know that Santa Claus will soon arrive. It's only a few months left till Christmas. So we've been hanging out here. We've got a special guest this evening on the Gratu Orloff television program. And uh, we'll be meeting him in a little bit. And uh, we'll be looking at some more Silver Age comics. Last time I think we got up through, halfway through, Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane. So we're up in the S's. So, uh, yes, it's a beautiful winter day here in Mount Kratu. And, uh, let's see. So, yeah, we'll be looking at, uh, Lois Lane, and then I guess we'll be moving into Thor and Tales to Astonish and all the T titles. But, uh... No further ado, let's uh, introduce our guest this evening. Hello, hi, how are you there? Oh yes, Gratu. My name is Ivanovic Ibrowski. I am a member of the World Economic Forum. I am a good friend of Klaus Schwab. And I have been sent here to make sure that you have been eating your bugs and have been giving up your worldly goods. Well, we ate some bugs this morning, uh, probably accidentally, with the Mexican food. Yes. But we haven't been giving up any worldly goods, although what? I threw out some uh, plastic uh, bottles into the recycling. Oh, that, that so, is good. Uh, that is good. So I'm helping with climate change. Yes, we must uh, move forward. Yes, yeah. we yes. Yeah. We're, we're moving forward, but then we're moving three steps backward to 1966 you know, here. A, a great year. Great year. Yeah, much much better than 2022. We're uh, we're completely forgetting that it's 2022 here. As we, uh, our new slogan here on the Grotto Orloff Show is uh, "Build Back Backwards" or or uh, making America old timey again. Or uh, what's another one? Uh, forward into the past. Uh, um, Long live the past. Move and forward. I... Move backwards. I am glad to be here, ladies and gentlemen. It's me, Graphic Man. That's shocking because I, I thought I didn't even recognize you. That's incredible. So, uh, how have you been doing? Ah, uh, doing great. Uh, brought the wife down here. We couldn't uh, couldn't wait to come to Mount Air, Calisota, I believe, is the state we're in this time. Calisota, yep. Calisota, the state fluctuates. He he lives in a portal. It's uh, it's very yep. nice and refreshing. And uh, we are moving back into the past. And yep. We love it here. Cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, we're, we're counting down until the Trump rally. Because uh, after Biden's speech the other day, decked out with all the red, the Hitlerian red and everything, it's like this is going to be an epic, I think, rally this evening. Um, but anyway, I think when I last left off, I was about... On this issue, um, which is everything I love about the Silver Age, this is issue 70, and I think the camera cut off right when I moved to uh, issue 83. You know, just 13 issues later, you can see the big difference uh, in the the realism that, that came in around 68 as they were trying to distance themselves from the the campiness of the Batman TV show, uh, DC started to make things look more serious with, uh, that's Neil Adams, right? That's gotta be Neil Adams, right? Both of them look great. But it, this is Neil Adams, right? I believe so. Yeah. So, um, it's still a great era. It's just, it start, you just start to see the, the change in uh, the sensibilities. Here's issue 93. Now, I. The, the title of this is actually Superman's Girlfriend, Lois Lane, so I have it filed under S after Superman. Uh, and then I have all the Superman-related titles, Super, and then Superman's Pal, 
would be after this, Jim, Jimmy Olsen. This is a great cover, uh, 97. Do you collect much uh, Superman? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I put the DCs all in, in the same area. Okay, I, that's the thing. I. Everybody does it differently. Well, I used to have everything alphabetized uh, like the Overstreet right. does, just right. all titles from all companies. And then I, a few years ago, right about the time I started this channel, I decided to separate Silver Rage and back from Bronze Age and, and up. And that took a few years. And then I realized maybe I should be also separating DC from Marvel and... The, the place I, the bookstore I work for, he, he'll put action comics in with Superman all in one section. Okay, yeah, I've, I've never seen that done. I've never seen action put in with Superman. That's very interesting, and that makes a lot of sense. I started to do that with Spider-Man comics because... Uh, he'll do that as well, yeah. Uh, I put Amazing Spider-Man under S, even though technically it's an A title. And then I put in all the, uh, I put in Peter Parker, the spectacular Spider-Man, and what, I don't have many web of Spider-Mans, but they go right after that. I just keep all the Spider-Mans together. Although I keep Marvel Tales in a separate box because I bought an, like an Alex Ross, I don't know if it's Alex Ross, but it's painted Alex Ross looking box, one of those fancy short boxes with Spider-Man on it. And I thought, well, what am I gonna put in here? I have too many Spider-Man bo books to fit in the short box, so I decided I'll put Marvel Tales in it. Just so, because did you buy these stupid boxes that are, aren't functional? They're they're pretty, but these these boxes get damaged, and then you you know, or my dog chews on the corner, and it's like, no, it's a masterpiece. The boxes don't need to be masterpieces. I mean, I can, uh, I don't know. So I just put Marvel Tales in there, which is a Spider-Man reprint title. Here's 104. Yeah, Superboy is a great newsboy there. See, the thing is, back then, newspapers and reporters and Jimmy Olsen and Clark Kent, I mean, they were heroes, uh, even you know, in, because we respected journalists and, yeah. and the press. And, and then we realized it's just all, maybe at one point they were all honest, but they sure aren't now. Here's a, a pretty famous cover. Yes, here's one that's sought after. Is it, is, what does this go for now, money-wise? I don't know the money-wise, but everybody loves the story because of the subject matter. Yeah, I mean, she, she changes, I guess, the, uh, into uh, an African-American woman. And Superman is given the choice, so uh, would you date me now that I've changed? Mm. And... The title, I think that comes from a, a novel that's like uh, pretty X-rated, isn't I Am Curious Yellow, like a, like a pretty dirty, one of those novels that's dirty but also kind of mainstream, I, I think so, but I, 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 I know this, this kind of stuff from reading Mad Magazine as a kid, you learn about popular culture, like there was some book called Port noise complaint, and they'd always show someone reading it, you know, some lascivious guy. And so I know that was some famous book that had to do with sex, but I, beyond that, I don't know. You, you learn about the pop culture of, of the past by reading the mad specials that reprint the stuff from mad from 10 years before. So you, by, by reading this junk, you learn about the past and, and, and much more than your contemporaries. Here's a, uh, Superman turning into a tree. He finally settled down and put down roots. <laughs> yeah. Boy, that's a interesting outfit for a reporter. She almost looks like, that looks like a superhero outfit, almost. Okay, so... Uh, blah, blah, blah. That's 112. Here's 121, and my um, the way I organize, I consider the Silver Age to end once DC goes to 20 cents. So that's probably a good maybe a year or at least a few months later than most people consider. And okay, okay, so now we're we're moving back. 
This is an important uh, variant cover for Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen. Does that say 96? Can't nine. Well, it's it's. I'll show you how it's a variant cover. <laughs> this uh, kid, Ed Steinman, one of the founders of the World Economic Forum, yes. wrote his name on here twice, but the N obscures the number. But uh, anyway, I thought I had earlier issues than this. Of uh, You know, I used to be a teacher, and I put out this student magazine, and sometimes I'd let the students read issues from the past with the students from last year and the year before their older brothers and sisters and what they wrote in the magazine and then I I'd have them read several issues and I said well what is your favorite issue that you read today during class and they they start writing about problems that people have you know global warming and then I realized they don't understand what the word issue means they think it means a problem because kids today don't see comic books. Magazines basically don't exist at all. There aren't magazine racks anywhere anymore. And so it seems like when I was a kid, if I said, hey, I've got this issue of Superman, everyone knew what issue meant in the 70s, but now kids do not know the word issue referring to a particular, um, you know, publication, or, you know, a particular title, anyway. It's just something, something they don't know. But I thought I had earlier issues than this. This is strange. Okay, but everything may be out of order. Let's see. Uh, and I'm correct. Things are out of order. What the heck in... What the heck? I try not to curse because you're here. I said, what the heck? What the heck? Uh, okay. We're building back better. Yes. <laughs> okay, so this isn't in order. I think I bought this more recently and it just got thrown in here because here's a, here's a 10 cents comic, oh, number 42. Looks real good. How, how, what do you think your earliest Jimmy Olsen is? I couldn't tell you offhand. Um, I don't have that many. Yeah. Looks like you have more than I do. Well, some people turn up their nose at these because oh, they're very silly. They're, they're great. Um, I think uh, there's a YouTuber uh, that's cool, silver-haired, Bronze Age babe, and she collects Superman and Batman comics, but I think she says she really just can't stand the Jimmy Olsen comics. Look at that orange Superman logo. That's great. Oh, yeah, yeah. That You don't see that very often. Um, it's It was 10 cents, and then uh, this isn't the next issue, but they would have, this is uh, number 60, and the last one was 42. But right before they went to 12 cents, it put, they I think yeah. they have still 10 cents, and when they go to 12 cents, they have a really big box, not because they are trying to advertise, hey, isn't that great that we're 12 cents now? But that was more for the re for the, the person at the checkout counter to realize, hey, you need to charge 12 cents now because comics had been 10 cents since the 1930s. And that was, uh, that happened at the end of 61, early 62, the comics went to 12 cents and... Uh, it hurt sales tremendously for everything but romance comics and Lois Lane, from what I hear, because girls weren't as put off by the extra two cents as guys were. And, it, and the comics industry didn't recover for until about 64, which is why there's a lot of those early Marvel comics that introduced a lot of the, the heroes that, you know, that everyone knows from the cinematic universe now are so hard to find because kids weren't, they just kind of stopped buying as many comics. This is uh, uh, 68. A lot of devil covers. I'm realizing the devil theme pops up a lot. Oh, wait a second. Here's another copy of, uh, of this one. 
That really is a spectacular cover. It might be a nicer condition too. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, let's take a look. This is one I got at uh, at Duncanville Books. That sticker has some meaning. I think it means five dollars, but I could be wrong. Um. Yeah, so I have two copies of this. Um. The Fantastic Army of General Olson, sixty. Yeah, things. Okay, so then there's 68. These are out of order. 68. Okay, here. Here's 70. So you're back hosting your show this week, the Four Color Fossils yes, on Wednesday. Yes, next Wednesday. Any particular theme or just the general, whatever you have to show? Just general. For those that are wondering, uh, my wife and I have uh, decided to come up and visit Gratu for a couple of, a couple of days, and so we're having a blast, and uh, Gratu and his wife are treating us very nicely, and uh, we're enjoying ourselves quite well. He thought we'd do a little episode while I'm here. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, it's silly, but it's fantastic. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, do do I really want to with Superman? Do I want to see something like uh, Man of Steel that just like a brooding? I'm so upset that I have to help these people. It's so depressing. I'm such a you know, like. Just, yeah. uh, here's a Beetle cover. Yes. I should, um, I could probably, if I ever wind up with a comic book wall, have a bunch of Beatle covers, you know, or British Invasion type covers. There's that Strange Tales, I think I showed it last time, where uh, the Thing and the Human Torch are, uh, with have Beatle wigs on. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, big uh, cultural moment there. The demons from Pandora's box. Yeah, there really are a lot of demons and devils that, that appear in comics. I guess because the comics code specifically it was forbidden to have you know vampires and zombies, but they didn't say anything about devils and demons. I guess I have two copies of that, so I'm a, officially a hoarder. It's got a fold in it. Here he's picking on Superman. Yeah. Here's number 87. Now this store, Half Price Bo Books in Dallas, has stickers like this. Um, it's apparently spread over some states. There are stores that are almost identical to Half Price Books in different regions. One's called uh, Second and Charles. And then I saw there was another store someone was talking about on YouTube, and I, I saw the video. It looked just like Half Price Books, but it's a Half Price Books started in Dallas. I went in the original location. It's just room after room after room as you go back, a maze of books. Uh, that original location doesn't exist anymore, but uh, yeah, here's another uh, The Beatles Come Back. Yeah, 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 not. <laughs> so, yes, it's uh, bouncier than the Beatles, more electrifying than Elvis. See Superman strut the Krypton crawl. Or is. Uh... Marlon Brando says Kryp Krypton, right? Didn't he say Krypton? The planet Krypton. He had to say it differently. It does it does kind of look like Ringo there. Tiny depiction of him. That was Pete Best. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you got some Legionnaires appearing here. 
cool. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's 101. I, uh, I started wa watching uh, the Crypt Keeper of Castle Hills video yesterday and then I I got depressed after five seconds and, and then I saw him come back and watch it later um, because m it seems like it was a year ago I saw in previews, I was looking at previews at my local comic shop and there was a book coming out all the covers of Erie Publications, Monster Magazines, all the gory 70s, 60s covers, all were going to be published in one book. So I got, I ordered it from my shop, and then I moved, and then I'm watching on Instagram, you know, every Wednesday when they show all their new books at that store that's now 10, 11 hours away. There was that book that they'd ordered for me out for sale because I'm not there anymore, and it's like, oh, shoot. So I said, well, I'll look at the publisher and see, you know, maybe I can just order it directly. And it's like, this book is no longer in stock, and it's like the day it came out. But but people print only the amount that are pre-ordered now with these books. So if you have some access to a copy of that book, I'll pay you back, you know, if you can magically materialize one of those books. The complete covers of Eerie Publications, I really am looking for that. But I'll watch the rest of the video, it's just like, oh uh, man, I want that book. Uh, Anti-Superman issue, shock-filled anti-Superman issue. 80 page giant, Jimmy Olsen 113. Graphic Man brought some posters that he's been making uh, as a gift. I should show those here in a little bit. Okay, here's when um, Jack Kirby came along. Yeah. So uh, Kirby did everything but Superman's face. Yeah. Although that kind of looks Kirby-like. A lot of times in these, they would uh, redraw Superman's face to look more like the consistent Superman look because Kirby had a very different vision of what human beings look like <laughs> it's like it would be interesting to like get inside his head and and because maybe he actually saw the world that way everyone has square fingertips and stuff okay so how long was he he was with i don't have the what these aren't in order you don't have the Don Rickles? i was thinking i have the Don. these aren't in any kind of freaking order at all 113, yeah, I was just thinking, where's my, I know I've got the, Don, I think I have the Don You Rose. probably got them, they're probably 137, just... yeah, because this is 137, yeah. this is 137, but this is before that. Yeah, DC went to the, the realistic look. Yeah. We'll probably find and it. And then Kirby came along and it, it changed completely. Okay, because, yeah, I hear this, they're out of order completely. Here's uh, <laughs> 95, we're going back in time. Again, we're moving backwards instead of moving forward. And this is, uh, a lot of times I wind up with more than one copy of these giant issues because I don't remember if I have it or not. And I'm in a store and I buy it and then I realize I've got two, three copies of that. Okay, so. All right. Sorry, guys. This is, uh, <laughs> it's one of those purple covers where I can never read them. Can you read that? Is that 98? It can't just be me. They print, I think so. I think they print so. black ink on purple covers. I love purple covers. The only problem is trying to read the number. Sometimes they'll put white the number in white ink on the purple. But anyway, <laughs> we're getting distracted by the number and not looking at the subject matter. He's marrying an ape. This is one of those classic covers that uh, <laughs> The Bride of Jungle Jimmy. I remember in the Tarzan books, he almost got married to a, one of the gorillas when he was a teenager. <laughs> uh, annual number one, Marvel. Oh, yeah, that was, they had that in, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's just like a...
13. Okay. Well, at least I'm getting everything alphabetical. I think this is, we're actually, we are literally going backwards. Here's the 97. I think that's the issue before the ape issue. 97. What is this? Okay, here's 104. Jimmy's weirdest adventures with his pal Superman. I don't have any music playing in the background, so they can't give me a copyright claim. Every sh I, I filmed a band last Saturday in the town square, and it put copyright claim, but it was it was a live band, and, and it wasn't I wasn't putting up a record. And, but I think they were doing cover versions that were so close to the original that the AI thought I was putting up Credence Clearwater Revival. And then on uh, the I did his Four Color Fossil show as a guest host on Wednesday, and it said copyright claim, and I played no music. I think what happened, I was afraid this would happen. I played some coming attractions, drive-in uh, coming attractions at the beginning, and those aren't copywritten. But I remember in one of them, it was a spook show trailer that I don't remember ever seeing before because in the background they were using uh, the, the groans and screams from the Walt Disney Creek uh, uh, chilling, thrilling sounds of the haunted house, one of my favorite records. And it's like those first ones on the beginning of side two. I'm not going to try to imitate it, but... Uh, but because I think Disney has such extreme copyright protection, those groans and moans on that record that originally were in a Mickey Mouse cartoon, uh, they, they said it, I, it has to be that. What else could it be? But anyway. So it doesn't matter, copyright claim. The one that's bad is a copyright strike. But a copyright claim means if you ever get over a thousand subscribers, you can monetize a video as long as it doesn't have a copyright claim. I don't know what I'm doing here. Every episode of the, the Graphic Man show has a copyright claim. Is because, it because of the Queen song? Yeah, my son got so close to the Queen song that it fools the YouTube. They think it's Queen. But, but it's but it's, it's not a karaoke version. He's actually playing the music. He's making his own version of that beat and everything. Yeah. So there's there's nothing of Queen in that version. It's all him. He assures me it's all him. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. It is pretty close. Yeah. Well, it's that. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's weird. Oh, you know what I just realized. This is the January 6th guy. Remember that came up to Nancy Pelosi? Yeah. He's in prison now. The, uh, you're probably not even supposed to say his name on YouTube. He was the uh, the blank shaman. You can't say that letter anymore. Like if I, if I was talking about James Bond movies or the novels, I couldn't mention the name of the guy that does creates all of the weapons because that's a forbidden letter. You can't mention that today in today's uh, dystopian future. Oh, well, I have apparently several copies of that particular issue. Isn't that exciting? Um, yeah, I started putting, oh, you know what else it could be? I, uh, I started, I found some, a sound effects soundboard on the internet, and while those trailers were playing at the beginning uh, I started pressing different buttons to see what they'd sound like and it was weird how sometimes they would the the, uh, the announcer would say you can change your you can bring your children to the drive-in and then I happened to just at that moment hit some screaming kid the little not a kid I didn't hit a kid I hit a button that made the noise of a screaming kid I need to sound make it sound right. And then right, and say, you'll, you'll have a gay old time at the drive-in. And I just happened at that moment to hit the George Takei button where it goes, oh my. And I didn't mean to do that. And probably everyone thinks I was doing that intentionally, like I was waiting to hit that button, knowing he was going to, that was complete. And I laughed so hard because it was complete uh, coincidence that I happened to hit it at that time. But anyway, this is a hippie, a hippie Olson's hay down. His name is now Hippie Olson. <laughs> Look at him there. 
Man, the Trump rally tonight, they, it starts in like four hours. They already have the whole crowd filling. They've got a biker behind where Trump's going to be talking. They've got like people of all races and uh, just some of the weirdest. It looks like a crowd in, the, in a mad magazine. All the different crazy looking people that are going to be back behind them tonight. 104, 113, 118, no, 113. I'm uh, actually getting these organized as we're going. This is, so I'm actually doing something. Oh, this is great. 122. Thanks to Ilona, I was turned into a freak. <laughs> Miss Gizpultazunsa changed me into a human porcupine. And a werewolf. That's the Wolfman issue. It, wasn't he a wolf man on several occasions? And he had a, a crush on this girl. It's like looking through your little black book, eh, Jimmy? You know, the thing about Jimmy Olsen, he was popularized really through the George Reeves TV show. But I never liked the actor, really, that played him. Uh, I thought he was very annoying. And I didn't like Lois Lane either. I mean... It, it's just the, the original Lois Lane on the show was fine, but it wasn't so much them, but it was the way the director told them to act like they were nine year olds. Yeah. It's like, gee whiz, Superman. And then the Lois Lane just acted like she was just mentally damaged, you know? It's just like uh, they, they were both gee willikers, you know? It's like. I wish they were stronger characters. In the, and I love the show. I'm not knocking the show. I'm just saying how I would have altered it if I, And then Superman looked like, you know, like your dad, you know. He was he, he didn't look like this guy. He was great and everything. And he, he actually it just like he was a I don't know. You have two copies of that one. That's what's throwing you off probably. Yeah. Where are the So it's oh, that's the 122. Oh uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's also talking and, and, and while I'm doing this. One thirteen eighteen, the there we there go, one twenty two. Okay, now yeah, you've had we that saw one. that one. Yeah, or did it. Yeah, I saw these. Right. But I still need to to put them into the numbering. Well Shit. those are Lois's, so Oh those are Lois Lane's, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> Alright, so where am I at here? I'm at the be 137. Yeah, you're, you're open to catch up with. The, okay, no, I'm a little bit ahead. Kirby's, yeah. Okay, here's here the, here's one of the Kirby. Yeah. Although, yeah, here they've completely changed his face. I, you know, I think that is possibly a Kirby Superman face, and maybe they didn't like that, and that's why they changed it to they redrew him. Hold on, is that that's not even a Kirby cover at all? That's a that's a Neil Adams cover. Yeah. Okay. okay, it's a Kirby. Kirby is inside, but the cover is a Neil Adams cover. So, yeah. The, there's a common myth, I think, that he when he went to D.C., he was real cocky, and he says, give me your lowest selling title, and I'll turn it into a big seller. That's not what he did. He said, I don't want to take a title that already is an established person on it and they get fired from that title for me give me something or you don't have someone that's on the on ish, the, the, that's their job to do that comic and so uh anyway so we wound up with Jimmy Olsen and uh um I don't think I don't know that he was treated any better at DC than he was at Marvel that looks great this that's is great, great um his uh, <laughs> his um, he comes up with these names for villains, and it's like sometimes they're kind of unfortunate. <laughs> oh, and here's here's some great Golden Age reprints in the back. They 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 always did. That's Newsboy Legion and these thicker ones. They give you a Golden Age story in the back that was also done by Kirby. Here's a dramatic couple of pages. Yeah, that's a pretty good panel. Uh, <laughs> Nor 
this came this was once sold in a uh, bookstore in Oklahoma Northside Book Emporium 225 Tidwell no that's not Oklahoma it says OX what's OX that's not even the United that's not even the United States that's probably England huh Oxford is Oxford a, a, a town or city in uh, England what the frick is ox? We've got, oh, when someone's restapled this like a nut. <laughs> Look at that. Maybe the cover was loose? It doesn't, s someone wanted to make sure this book stayed together. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that looks a little bit like uh, Planet of the Apes guy. Yeah. You know, Kirby says he never saw Planet of the Apes, but, you know, he must he was very aware of Planet of the Apes between this and, uh, and Command Deep. But anyway, this is a unfortunate villain because uh, I didn't want to say that on YouTube. I'll get in trouble. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a prefix that means same. It has, it's a Latin word, but now it's a little problematic as we move forward in our brave new world we don't want to use that word especially with the word disastrous right after it e Shit. Uh, so what did you think of the mexican restaurant we had brunch at graphic man very nice very well decorated yeah, they have painted murals on the walls of uh, stuff. His wife got to speak Spanish to the uh, the waiter. And probably yeah. made fun of it, all of us, you know. And, no. Oh, I'm kidding. Yeah, my wife's <laughs> first language is Spanish. I tell her it's like a superpower she has because she can... Because that... Back where we used to live, there were restaurants you could go to. There were Honduran restaurants and, and places where they don't expect people to go in there that's know how to speak English. None of the cashiers, they really don't know English very well. So, you know, she goes in, then all of a sudden that opens up all these restaurants to me where I could never communicate with them. And she has this magic power to speak Spanish. It's really cool. Uh, anyway, this is not real. I mean, it's a real object. I'm holding it, but it's not a truly old 1950s object. It's a reprint. But it sure would look good on a wall. Yeah. I got this really cheap, um, like like I think five dollars or less. I don't know what they go for. So what? Why the hell is it here? Why isn't it with the Supermans? And then here's a a cover. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that the that looks good. Okay, so here's, I don't have much uh, pre-code horror. I wish I did, but I happen to have this. Wow. You've got a lot of pre-code horror. Yeah, that was, that's sharp. Yeah. That green monster, man, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, they'll like seeing that. That's great. And you got a lady in distress, red dress in distress. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that's the cool red stuff. dress in distress is important to have yeah. red dresses. Oh yeah, that's hmm. a good book. Yeah, that's better than you think it is. That's that's really no, good. No, I I never said it's not good. Yeah. I'm just saying I wish I had a lot more oh, of I these. See to me. Yeah. I I um. Yeah. What number? You, can you see the number on that? Twenty six. Oh, it's suspense. Twenty six. Real, real good. Which is not. Is that tales of suspense? Okay, well, I have it with Tales of Suspense, but it doesn't matter because... That's just Suspense, yeah. That's yeah, I, it might be a separate title, or maybe it yeah. grew into Tales of Suspense. Here's Tales of Suspense. No, it It'd can't be because yeah. this is 15, so it's right. a separate yeah. issue. This is my oldest issue of Tales of Suspense. Behold, Goom, the thing from Planet X. Wait, Planet X, isn't that where uh, Groot is from also? Planet X must have a lot of cool stuff. Get back, run for your lives. Nothing can stop Goom. 
That's a great monster. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, I need. I mean, how do I begin? I mean, what? I mean, at this point, this is the wrong time probably to even try to begin trying to collect pre code horror. I don't know. What do you think? Baby steps. Just get, get you one. Go for one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. going to have to be by mail order or yeah. I'm going to have to drive vast distances. Um, well, I guess that was me getting just one, but that was, I got that a long time ago. This is, um, that's another thing, guys, I'm looking for, uh, it's probably still in all the comic stores, but I don't have comic stores here. They're, they reprinted a Tales of Suspense um, from around this era that had the first Hawkeye just about a month ago, or maybe even not a month ago, but I need to, I would like to get that reprint, but... This is uh, not in the best shape. I don't know why someone would have done that, but it's number 54. I mean, you can still read the comic and everything, but. And then, uh, this is a pretty high dollar one, but yeah. it didn't used to be. Yeah. Uh, I have a couple of copies, because I've always liked the Black Widow. I always liked female characters, and uh, but she wasn't a big deal until the movie. She was introduced in the movies, and that's when all the speculator people started to. Uh, so I, hey, yeah, I have these two copies. Here's here's the other one. One of them I bought from my friend Jason Cohen um, when he got a bunch of comics that he bought at his store, his oddities store. Uh, and I don't think I don't think I paid more than thirty forty dollars for it. I don't know which one was the one I got from him, but I think, what are they worth now? Do you have any? Well, they're in the hundreds. If you get like uh, a bunch of them together, yeah. Well, that, that first appearance of Black Widow, oh, it definitely. could be yeah. actually in the, th it may be over a thousand. I don't know. Here's uh, 72. I, I don't, a lot of people, they don't get, I was talking about, they don't like these split books. You know, they'll get the whole run of Captain America or Iron Man or Hulk, but they don't like it when they're split. And I don't understand that because the the most classic or iconic stories, the ones that were adapted into the Marvel Superheroes 1966 cartoon were, came from these books. These are the, the ones that had that great... Uh, um, narration and music and um here's a great cover coming up yeah Look there's at 73 this this is a. Uh, I got this for half price i'm pretty sure the red meant half price but i i can't i don't think i paid 28 for it yeah and um yeah the horse is really well drawn you're right who's who's the artist here do you know this is, um, yeah, that's great. Now, could it be a Don Heck? I don't know. No. I don't know. 74. Yeah. Beautiful. I think all these are beautiful. Oh, yeah, of course. We're biased. <laughs> this one's not in the best of shape. It's 81. That's, is that a purple cover? It looks like a purple kind of. cover. If you look close enough. Oh, I have two copies. Oh. Uh, my wife just sent me a, at the top of the screen something about four color fossils. Is that, no, that was a link to your, your next episode, wasn't it? Is, is your show called Four Color Fossils Are Very Inviting? Oh, sorry, she said sorry. She made a mistake. So. Oh, okay. I think that's the the link to because you already have the this this it's set up for the next uh, episode. This is eighty six. Again, the, that store that I keep talking about, Dunkinville Books, which is my favorite comic store that I can't get to anymore because it's on the other side of the country. They have different color stickers that mean different things, and I think the red sticker means ignore this price. It, they're going to charge you half that. Or, or it might mean 
that you have to pay that price. I don't remember. And that cover you'll see reprinted like twice in the the reprint called Marvel. I believe it's Double Action. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They would uh, they would reprint these stories in uh, the seventies in comics like Marvel Super Action, Marvel Double Action. What were some of the other ones? Uh, they'd reprint these stories about ten years later, but when they reprinted them. The colors were brighter, and uh, because there was an argument, uh, Marie Severin colored these covers for Marvel in the 60s, and she colored them with a more subdued tones, with subdued tones, and then Stanley was always wanting them to be brighter, and so in the 70s, when they were reprinted, this artwork was printed with bright colors and uh, Marie Severin disagreed with that. And of course she was the colorist for the EC comics and, and they had uh, more subdued colors too. It was just a stylistic choice. But he didn't like it, but he didn't argue too much because the comics were selling. Now while he's getting another box or whatever, I'll do a little social commentary here. We love Marvel and for a long time DC kind of kept Marvel down to like eight titles early in the 60s. So you'd think Marvel would be appreciative of having a few slots on the newsstand, but at that point in time when they were doing all these reprints, it seemed like they wanted to make sure nobody else could get on the newsstand, and so they started making all these reprint titles, Marvel Tales and all these others, Marvel Triple Action, Double Action, Super Action. Yeah. And so they weren't very nice to... Other publishers, Harvey, and Charlton, and Gold Key, because uh, they they kind of flooded the market there. You only had so many slots on the newsstand, but yeah. So you'd like to be nice to certain companies, but I uh, maybe I maybe I have all that history wrong. But well, um, looking back, it seems like they could have done things a little differently, or maybe it just looks that bad. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. Yeah, um, I heard somewhere recently that that um, you know that Marvel, you way you read it now, that Marvel was outselling DC and they were the number one. T they were actually uh, way down the totem pole. I think the um, as far as the sales goes, I mean they were revolutionary, but they weren't selling as much. They were doing really well, but. There were, you gotta remember, there were a lot of other comic companies out there. Uh, uh, when you were buying comics, it wasn't just like today. Marvel and DC are pretty much it, and then there's some independents. But can you show that one again? Yeah, well, I was. Hey, I'm actually, yeah. Hey, giant man, why don't you shrink down that way you can get in the door real quick, and then, then get real big. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was going to show it again because I actually have two copies of cool. it. So this one, it looks like it's a little more browned. What does that say on it? $22? Okay. $22. $53. Ah, the porcupine. Excellent. I think that the Tales to Astonish, I bought a bunch of them that some kid had written in giant letters with magic marker on the cover so I think yeah here we go oh. 55 <laughs> um, I don't know what they're even doing I think inside is perfectly okay but it's like what does that say pi looks like the pi symbol and nine and then like I, I, I don't know what that even means some kind of uh, magical code I guess It looks like it says number one. <laughs> I don't know what they're talking about. It's issue 55. You know, I got these real cheap. They were, yeah, it's, oh, <laughs> it's just like... Spider-Man <laughs> cover. Oh. Yeah, they, they've completely effed it up. But, you know, you can read the insides, and, and, and the thing about it, you can get reprints of these, I'm sure, yeah. you but can, you don't have the ads and all that wonderful stuff. You can still see its greatness shining through, though. Uh, there's a damn book that 
didn't have a back backing board and it's, it's gotten messed up. Trying to hide the damage from your eyes. That chameleon didn't get used much he, early on in the Spider-Man. but Yeah. Look at that. He looks a uh, little bit uh, like a meth head there. <laughs> okay, so we're up to 63. You know, Giant Man could... He could be in the good home demolition business. He just walks into your house and then gets big. And yeah. You know, um, 64. Very sweet. Um, 65. These days, you would accuse Marvel of making a new toy line where he's got a new toy outfit with yeah. blue uh, accented pieces. Right. But they just wanted, let's give him a blue helmet and a blue vest. Yeah, because I think what was happening is the sales weren't what they wanted. They, they thought maybe if we give him a different outfit or change him from Ant-Man to Giant-Man, they were desperate. The same idiot did this. Looks like he wrote number five. I, I don't even know what he's talking talking about. Why is that number? It's 65. Maybe it's number five of some storyline. I don't know what his deal is. Um, this is a beautiful cover, 66. This is 67. Do you have all of these probably? No, but this one's this is the one of the few that I have and I love it. Yeah, that that's a wonderful uh and they use this pose of the Hulk in their little stationery. Yeah. And they do that little uh, pencil drawings. Oh, it's a great uh, pose for the Hulk. Yeah. This is an odd cover. I've always thought it looked a little funny, but it, it's it's a classic. Yeah. So, um... Sixty-nine. Seventy one. Another seventy one. And again, I, these were not, I wasn't buying them up on purpose. I mean, there'd be no point in buying two copies of something if I don't have a complete run. Why would I buy two copies of a particular issue when I could get another one? But this is seventy two. It's just I don't ever see many of these you know you go into a store and they'll have like one of these or you know and then six months a year two years later you'll find another one so this is all what i've accumulated since you know uh when co a comic store first opened near me in the summer of 77 the same it's another copy um before then, I was buying comics, but I wasn't finding old comics. Uh, I think one time before that, I was at some flea market, and they, uh, there was a guy with a set up in a booth. It was actually inside a mall, I think, right, right by the movie theater where I saw Young Frankenstein. Some, some teenager had set up a booth with a bunch of boxes filled with comics, and. Uh, but I was uh, concentrating on the not brand Ech comics. This is that same guy, 80, number 81, that marked all of his comics the same way. And this one says number six on it. It must mean the sixth one he has of this. And he sold all of his uh, collection to this one guy that I bought it from, I guess. 
There's King Kong. Yeah, this one, I remember they reprinted this in around 1972, 73 in a 20-cent comic. and But they had a super bright red background, as I recall, and they had much brighter colors uh, on it. But you see, the, the coloring is very similar to the coloring that you would see on an EC horror comic, because Marie Severin was doing that. Let's cover, try to cover up the price so people don't make fun of me for paying too much or something. <laughs> That's uh, 87. Of course, I could switch the bags out, but that would uh, require me having bags. Here's 90. This cover's a little wonky. Uh, it's good. Pro wrestling pose here. Yeah, I think it was this one. I, I mean, I already had. It might have been an earlier one. I once saw a copy of of one from around this time period, and the cover was on upside down, or maybe the insides were upside. Whatever, and it was a printing error somehow, and uh, I didn't get it. But I later thought, are are those valuable to have a weird printing error like that? Unless someone took the cover off and stapled it on the wrong way. Um, that, to me, is a pretty classic uh, Hulk. Uh, and is that Marie Severin, possibly? That's probably why I like it. Probably. That looks like Marie Severin. Yeah. Those of you at home, practice getting in those poses sometimes. <laughs> Here's 96. Here's Castle Grey Skull. Yeah. Or Skull Island, so maybe yeah. they'll meet King Kong. Uh, if you like the blue tone. That's great. This. That's Severin. That or, um, Maurice Severin. Or Trump or. Well, who is that? Ooh. Uh, it's 99. Um, it, I, my first thought is that it's Marie Severin. Because if you look at... Hmm, I don't know. Because sometimes you'll think it's Marie Severin and it'll be Bill Everett. But Bill Everett also has a really great comical uh, style. I mean, I, I kind of like people that, that draw not entirely realistically, but... Because you're reading a comic, you don't want it to be absolute realism. You know, people like C.C. Beck or Jack Cole with Plastic Man. Here's... Um, oh, great cover. Yeah, I don't have any of these. These are all, these are awesome. Okay, so that must be a right, right about this time that the Hulk takes over this title. I have 102. That's the Hulk. And that's the Hulk. Yeah. And then... Um, Okay, and then Submariner started with Submariner right. number one. Um, he joins Iron Man and Submariner in that weird special one-off. Oh, that's right. So there's and an then, issue in between. And then he does Submariner one. -off. Okay, right, right, right. Oh, look at there, Teen Here's Titans. Teen Titans number three with a Big Daddy Roth kind of guy. Yeah. He's the uh, demon dragster. So around this time, this... You know, it was and it's shooting out surfboards, everything that was cool <laughs> about teen culture. That's awesome. Um, you know, is is here. Um, Return of the Mad Mod, number 17, yeah, reflecting the, the time period. The Geeky periods. Puppets read this book. Oh, like, they did? I think I was part of that one. Really? And boy, that's a... That bad guy lets them get out of so many... <laughs> many times he could have killed them. He just lets him get away several times. <laughs> Here's where it starts to, you know, all the DC titles for a while had horror type covers, and then they all look like, kind of like House of Mystery. Oh, you got Here's what the, a cover. Yeah. Thirty-four. Yeah, this is in the horror era. Yeah. It's 
It's not just floating heads, but floating people on yeah, the sides. Yeah, great stuff. Flo floating bodies. Oh, I got two cool. copies cool. because, you know, well, every time I saw it, it's like, I don't know if I have that, but if I don't. Sometimes it's not, you um, see, Sweet. still part of the horror, horror period. S sometimes you, uh, the thing about it is you've seen a title, so, uh, a comic, so many times like in, in magazines or pictures of it on the internet and you're like well have I just seen that cover a lot or do I actually own it and uh, wow. here's Journey into Mystery 98 look at this don't you have the first Thor do you uh, have the no, first Thor no, uh, 93 is my oldest but that's a good one too look at that Cobra wow look at that you can't go wrong. Early journey into mysteries. What was your? What is the first? The uh, first one. Eighty. Eighty three is the earliest. Eighty three. Oh, he's got the man of tomorrow. Yes. Oh. One.